Hello, Sophie here with part two of my grease pencil tutorial um, sharing how to make a kind of lights out day to night animation. So today we will be painting with grease pencil. I'll be explaining the different grease pencil materials and how I personally enjoy using them how I work with Grease Pencil's color palette and create my own color palette. And I'll also talk a bit about some of the shortcuts and settings that I changed to make the painting process more enjoyable for me personally. So just a reminder, I have bonus resources that come with this tutorial. So there is also a paid version, which includes some extra downloads, such as a real-time version of this tutorial. So while this YouTube video is condensed and highly edited, the real-time version follows my entire painting process, painting this piece using grease pencil, and includes me casually chatting through my process. So that is available in the same Gumroad listing just as the paid version, and it can also be accessed by becoming a patron. So first, I want to make sure I'm at frame one of my animation, back in the day part of it. And then in edit mode, I'll press A, to select all my strokes, and I can delete them with X, I'll go to my layers in the object data properties, and I will, let's select this layer, and I'll rename it. So I think I'll keep it simple with my materials here, materials properties tab. I will use a combination of the solid stroke material, which just draws straight lines, solid strokes. And I will also create some gradient materials, which we can create together. So I'll create a new material slot and create a new material. I can double click on the name of the material to rename it and I'll call it gradient one. gradient one. I will probably make more. So for this material, I want to check on the box for fill. I'll draw a stroke just so you can see what I'm doing. So I checked on the box for fill, so that's why that happened with that. And I'll change the style to gradient. I want to raise the blend value to one because I want this uh, gradient to be fully affected by vertex colors, which is the blue color that I'm using. By the way, I didn't mention this, but I did turn on vertex color mode, the drawing mode uh, here with the color attribute button. And so then what I do with the gradient fills is that I like to have one color, you know, I keep it as it is black with an alpha value of one. But the secondary color, I can give it an alpha value of zero. I don't need to change the color because again, I'm just using the vertex colors with it. And also it's alpha value of zero is fully transparent. But now you can see, you can see my fill gradient. We can see in the transparent area, the paper texture showing up through it, which I think is so cool. So this is how the gradient looks. I typically, um, I'm doing some test strokes just to see how it looks. I typically like for the gradient, the solid part of the gradient to be like on the inside of the U shape of my stroke. So in this case, it's the opposite of how I want it. The dark part of the fill is at the start of the stroke. So I'm pretty sure if I change the rotation value to 180, yes, that's how I want it. That was one option. Another option would be to check the box for flip colors, which did the exact same thing. And then I'll just modify the gradient settings a little bit, the location and scale values, just because this first gradient, I think I'm going to want it to be quite light. So I think that's a really attractive gradient for this first part of my painting. And as I mentioned, I will be making more gradient brushes, gradient materials, I'm sure of it. Back in edit mode, A, X to delete everything. And then I started sketching with this material. So I liked that this gradient was subtle enough that I was able to draw lines with it without the gradient affecting it too much. But then I also had that gradient accessible for when I wanted to shade in areas by making larger shapes. At other times, I also shaded in areas with the stroke part of the material. So I would use the shortcut F to resize the brush to be larger. And then I would scribble in areas that I wanted to darken. I really like having options, and so I would regularly switch between these two ways of darkening my piece. While I'm sketching, I regularly make use of Grease Pencil's other tools and modes. So for example, 
Here I've gone into edit mode, I've selected some strokes, and I ended up deleting them with X. They just weren't working, and sometimes it's just easier to start back from a blank slate. And then I also use sculpt mode tools to nudge different parts of my piece and to fix up the proportions while I work. So speaking of proportions, Flipping my canvas is one really helpful way that I can get a new perspective on my piece and check on my proportions. I have a whole video about how I flip my canvas if you're curious. And so a big part of my drawing process and my mindset is just alternating between all kinds of different things uh, to keep the process exciting for me. And so I'm regularly jumping around my piece to different parts of my piece and switching between tools, flipping my canvas, taking breaks and coming back to it to get a new perspective on my piece. And so after about a half hour, here was my finished sketch. So I took a day off uh, to think about how I want to go forward with this piece and animate it. So before diving into painting, I do want to change some settings from the default settings uh, because I can't. I can't anymore with the default settings. Um, so here, very quickly, are my absolute essential settings that I change. So I'll go into Edit, Preferences, and then in the key map, I check on the box for Tab for Pi Menu so that I can change modes way more easily between the switch between the different grease pencil modes. And then up here, I'll search by key binding for middle mouse. And then in the 3D view, what I like to do is to change the pan view to be a uh, middle mouse. And then the rotate view, which was middle mouse, I change that to shift middle mouse. Personally, uh, how I use grease pencil, especially for 2D paintings like this, I rarely rotate my view. And so I'd rather have a valuable button like middle mouse uh, panning the canvas, which I do way more often. And then I'll also search by name for uh, material. And so change active material is um, a shortcut in draw mode. It's currently you. So when you press that, it brings up this menu of your material. So that makes it really easy to switch between them. But I like, I find you is just uh, an awkwardly placed key. So I prefer to change that to A. A does other things in edit mode like it selects all of the strokes and then double tapping A deselects them, but it did not do anything in draw mode, so, so that's good. And then um, you actually just saw me do this uh, here. I can toggle showing the overlays. So this is really helpful to see the overlays in edit mode uh, so that I can see my selections, but it's really hard to get an accurate sense of how my drawing is looking while I'm in edit mode and like sculpt mode as well. And so I like to be able to toggle it on and off really easily. And so I like to give it the shortcut um, D. And so I can do that by actually right clicking on this icon assign shortcut and I'll make it D. Again, it's just a key that I find easy to reach and it's one I use a lot. So um, I want to have an important function for such an important key. And so this does have one conflict that I've noticed in vertex paint mode. Uh, pressing D will access this draw tool up here. And so when I use this mode, I really only switch between these two tools, draw mode and replace tool. A draw tool and replace tool. And so rather than try to remember the shortcuts for each of them, uh, typically for switching between the tools, I prefer to add them to my quick favorites, which I can do with uh, right clicking over them, add to quick favorites. And then my quick favorites I can access with Q. And so because I find that a lot easier, I will also right click over the draw tool and remove its shortcut so that D will also toggle on and off the overlays even while I'm in vertex paint mode. So that is already a really good base. Maybe while I'm, while I'm here in draw mode, I'll, I will add the draw tool and the eyedropper tool to my quick favorites. Those are really the only ones I use in draw mode. So now I'll be setting up my materials for this part of the process. So I think it'll be good to use three different materials and like they're gonna be different types of materials. 
So it'll be cool to share how I use them, how they differ from one another. So the first material will be another gradient material similar to the first one we made. Uh, the only difference being that I will want this one to be a lot darker compared to, you know, as we can see, the first one was very light. So I'll create a new material slot. And then in this dropdown, I can actually select that material, press on this two icon to duplicate it. And I'll double click on each of them to rename them. I'll rename the first one sketch uh, because that's pretty much the only material I used for my entire sketch. You can see if I toggle this material on and off, that's pretty much all of the strokes we have currently belong to that material. And I'll rename this new one gradient colors. So I'll draw some test strokes with it. And then I'll just change the strength of the gradient using the scale sliders and the location X slider. Okay, I want to delete only these test lines that I just drew. An easy way to do that is by double tapping A to deselect all. Um, select these new strokes and delete them. So I think this is looking like a good strength for this material. So you can have a look at my settings if you'd like to copy them. It's a bit hard to explain uh, exactly what settings or what look I'm trying to get. This is just from experience of using gradient fill materials and like getting a sense of how I want, how dark I want it to look and how I want the gradient to look. So next I will be creating a texture fill. So I'll again create a new material slot, this time creating a new material which I can rename uh, Fur Texture. I'll add a fill, change the style to texture, and I will open up and insert one of my repeating textures into this. So now I'll just test it out, how it's looking in draw mode. So uh, some settings that I want to change, I want to raise the blend value to one. Since it's a black and white texture, I basically just want it to be fully affected by whatever vertex color that I choose. And then I want to change the rotation value. Uh, 90 should be good. Because basically I want the, the direction of the lines to follow the direction of the stroke that I draw. And so I want to know, like this is how that I control the direction in which the texture shows up. Uh, by drawing either like strokes that go from top to bottom to get vertical lines of the texture or strokes that go from left and right, left to right to get the texture to show up horizontally. So that's good. I'm happy with that. I think I'm not going to modify the scale for now. I think that's a good size uh, for this texture. Oh, look at this little plaid design that it made. I love grease pencil textures. So again, in edit mode, double tap A to make sure everything is deselected. Select this and delete those points. And then the last material that I want to use will be just a solid stroke material. So we already have a material like that in this material list, but I am gonna be creating another one. So I will just add a new material slot select that material solid stroke and duplicate it and i will rename it for strokes all right so i started painting um i started by using my gradient material to glaze on colors the important thing here is that i'm not trying to get any color to be perfect right off the bat i'm just working on building up to the correct colors so for example if i put down a color and it's too dark then I can lighten it with the next color that I lay down by laying down a lighter color. If I use a color that is initially too saturated, then I can dull it by laying down a gray color on top of it or a complementary color will also desaturate that color. And so I'm just trying to get closer with each stroke that I glaze on, closer to the final colors that I want. And so I'm really thinking of the big shapes at this stage. I'm just laying down big blobs of color and really trying hard to not get too lost in the small details too soon. So I'm already liking this base of colors that I'm glazing on. So now I'm starting to feel like some of the sketch lines, especially around the edges of the drawing, um, they're just too much. So what I'm gonna do, I'm working all on the same layer, remember? And I am doing this a bit as like a challenge to just show you different ways to select different strokes and to work with them. And I'm also doing this because this is just genuinely how I like to work. And I personally tend to keep a very small layer count because it is so easy to select specific parts of your piece. So this is all in the same layer. 
And currently I'm using two materials. We have the sketch material and this gradient color materials, which material which I'm using to glaze on colors. And as you can see, I can isolate them and I can make one visible, I can hide one, and I can also lock them. So what I'm gonna do now is I will lock the gradient color material that I'm using. So if I go into edit mode, uh, nothing is currently selected. And so when I select now, I am basically only selecting uh, my sketch material because those are the only two materials on this layer. And I can delete those strokes. And this is honestly how I really like to paint. I have a sketch and then I start adding colors and then I clean up my sketch as I go because I can lock the materials that I'm using to paint. So something I do while I'm working with a gradient material like this, so in this case I just drew a stroke which uh, was a very important stroke because I basically wanted to create a gradient in the background around this dog with one single stroke and so it outlines the dog shape pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that. It goes over the sketch lines a little bit and so maybe what I'll actually do for that. I have it selected and it's the only thing selected in edit mode so I can right click, arrange, and send it to the back. So you can see the before and after. I'm thinking that the gradient is too strong currently and so for the most part working with gradient materials I let them be whatever they're gonna be like that's fine but in cases like this where I have a very specific look that I want a single gradient stroke to have, what I do in edit mode is I use this tool here. It's called the transform fill tool. And if I use the translate option of that, you can see that I'm moving the gradient of this stroke to something a lot more subtle. So I have a base with this first material that I'm pretty happy with. And so I think I'm gonna move on to the second material now. I'm gonna try to keep this piece pretty sketchy for, for your sake and mine. So I will change the active material to the fur texture. And let's see what we can do with this. So now that I have some colors laid down, and I've been using the gradient brush to glaze on some colors. We have some colors in the piece that I think look really nice but that don't really exist in the color palette yet. So I will use this eyedropper tool here, which we also added to our quick favorites. I will make sure to change it to palette selection mode so that I'm selecting, as you can see, if I select the colors get added to my palette down here. And so I will just pretty freely select a lot of colors around my piece to just expand my options so that now as I use this new material, I'm able to select colors and to get strokes that match the colors that are already on the canvas a lot better. So now you're seeing me use this fur texture material. I think it's a really quick way to indicate some fur lines. And I think that for a lot of an animal's body, uh, that it's enough to only indicate this amount of fur. Later on, I am going to add individual strands of fur as extra details, but I think of these more as accents and I use them sparingly to help sell uh, that this is fur. So that added a bit of fun texture and I feel like helped up to break up all of those really soft gradients and add a bit of like really graphic texture strokes for texture indication. So now I'm gonna switch to the final material that we created. And so this material I was thinking would really come in handy for drawing specific individual fur strokes, like especially here. There's a lot of fur texture that we can capture. And I, I have this color palette that I selected using the eyedropper tool, but I can also modify those colors as I need. And then once I've modified a color, I do like to add it back to my color palette with this plus icon so that I can access it again. And in that way, I also build up my color palette. And from this point onward, I'm probably going to be mostly picking from this color palette and then just modifying those strokes. And so that's my plan for this piece. And I will be jumping around quite a bit between the three different materials. And I just, I really like having these three different materials, which have like three different approaches and mindsets associated with them. 
And I just find it a fun way to, to stay fresh and to keep a process interesting. So now that you know how I plan to use each material that I created, the rest of my process is just me doing that for another hour and a half. It's tricky for me, honestly, to explain how I render and paint because it feels like just the same thing over a very long stretch of time. I'm just adding strokes. <laughs> So how do I explain that? So here are some highlights that I took while I was watching back my process and hearing myself explain why I was doing everything. And so I hope that they give a bit of an insight into my rendering process with grease pencil. So one thing is that I look back and forth very often between my reference image and my piece. So I'm on the lookout for things that look different and I like thinking of this process as a process of fixing, of tweaking elements in my drawing that feel off in order to get my piece closer to the reference image. When it came to doing the fur, I was thinking of having both active areas and areas of rest. So I wanted areas with a lot of fur detail uh, that was really well defined, and then other areas that would be a lot less defined with just the vaguest indication of fur. So here I was getting to the pause and I switched back to my sketch material for this. Since paws are really complex, I find it easier to add details with lines and with sketching rather than painting them in. So especially uh, in this case, I wanted to keep them simple because for me, the most important area of this piece was the face. And so I wanted to uh, move on from these paws rather quickly. And I'm still using the same techniques as I talked about in my sketching part. I'm selecting strokes in edit mode to delete them or move them. And I'm also using sculpt mode tools to fix the proportions of the body. At one point, I flipped my canvas back to the original position. Usually when I paint, I flip my canvas a lot more than this, um, but I was distracted by filming and talking, so I only actually flipped it once and then flipped it back to the initial position. An effective way for me to stay on track and to speed up my process a little bit was to save the part of the piece that I was most excited for, the face, as the last part. It kept me motivated while I was working on all of the other areas and it kept me moving along to new areas pretty quickly because I was just really excited to get to that phase. So I spent the last 20 minutes or so making the face as nice as possible. It's a bit more rendered than the rest of the piece because this is the focal area and so I could afford to have it be more rendered while still keeping the whole piece quite sketchy. And yeah, that is it. Overall, I had a really great time working on this piece and I adore how it came out. So this brings part two of this tutorial to a close. Thank you for watching. And so I hope that the way that I did this, this video, it was helpful and beneficial to follow along with. Part three will be up a week from when this video goes live, but if you're watching from the future, then you can just access that video right here. I appreciate you so much for being here. Please consider liking the video and subscribing. And in between uploads, you can find me all over the internet at Sophie Jantak. I will see you very soon. Take care. Bye.